Uh, one final question before I let you go. You're around a lot of funny people, right? Right. But there's always a difference between people that are really funny on stage versus people that are funny in person. I interviewed Michael Jai White recently, and he was friends with Rick James. He said that Rick James was by far the funniest person he had ever been around. He said that he was funnier than Eddie Murphy, way funnier than Eddie Murphy in person. What's the craziest Rick James story that you have? Dude, Rick was one of the funniest people I've ever known. And, and he's not, he wasn't funny just because, oh, it's Rick James and he's making a joke or whatever. He was just naturally super funny. <laughs> did, um, you, did you know Rick or Eddie, by the way? Or yeah, you, I know, you know both Rick? of them. You know both of them. I know both Was of them. Rick, well, number one, any crazy Rick James stories? Because <laughs> I've heard some crazy ones. Um, it's a few, but uh, Rick James was the coolest, man. You can't say, you can't tell me the, the crazy Rick James story? Uh, uh, no, this okay. Rick was talking shit to Eddie. Said, they got, uh, they got, they got album you did in party all the time. That shit was terrible, terrible. Wait, 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 but, but Rick James wrote that song. Exactly, and that's what Eddie said to him, but you read it. <laughs> He said, he said, but you wrote it, James. Yeah, and I should have kept it for my mother self. <laughs> Let you f it out. Uh, Rick James like, I'm going to tell Eddie, put you in the movie. I said, don't be. I'm going to tell him. Him. Rick, the f wrong with him? I made that mother. <laughs> Rick, was, Rick was my Rick man. Rick said that he made Eddie he Murphy. He said he made Eddie. Well, I mean, his music career, you could say that. I mean, but Rick was just. But, but Eddie was a superstar by the time just, that song I mean, came out. Hey, man, you <laughs> talking to Rick James, man. <laughs> he was white with cocaine. He a, he a fucking rock star, man. I'm hanging with a rock star. He know my name. and he's he's. Uh, that's why he's so, because he's so fucking funny. Oh, yeah, Darius McCrary, uh, who was real close to Rick, Mm -hmm. told me this story on camera about how Rick was at a party <laughs> at Eddie Murphy's house and he insisted on driving and he ended up backing up into Eddie's statue <laughs> like in his driveway it's breaking the statue that they had to go tell Eddie <laughs> what they had just done <laughs> we were at Eddie's house and um it was after one of Eddie's big premieres and and you know um it was winding down and the crazy thing about this story is he was completely sober. Matter of fact, we were drinking Odul's beer. I was drinking Odul's with him because he used to like to show me that you could, you don't have to party, you know, all the time <laughs> to have a good time. So we were drinking Odul's beer. I'll never forget this. And so we were leaving, and he had this brand new fly ass Mercedes, man. It was one of the big ones, and um, <laughs> um, he said. And we were leaving. We said bye to Eddie. And find, Eddie just such a gracious host. He was sitting down. He finally decided to eat his food, you know. And so he was sitting down. He was, <sighs> it was a good night. Everything came off right. And so Papa Rick says to me, give me the keys. I'm, I'm going to drive. And I looked. I said, huh? He said, I'm going to drive. I, I said, well, Papa Rick, you know, because he had a stroke, you know. And, and it, it para left, left half, one side of his body paralyzed. So, you know. Um, man, he said, I was driving before you were a thought. Give me the keys. So when he got like that, I used to be like, all right, man, fine. So it was him, me, and his daughter, Ty. Ty James, we were in the car. Man, he threw the car in reverse, and it, uh, he started the car, threw the car in reverse. Next thing I knew, just... <laughs> and Eddie, it was this beautiful courtyard. Beautiful fountain, looked like something that came from the Venetian, the real Venetian, something that came from Italy. The, he must have got this, this shit from the Vatican. It was just gorgeous. It had these beautiful ladies holding up. And man, all I remember was water, just water, like we had driven the car underground, man. And, and so he, he, he put the car, uh, uh, moved the car a little bit forward to get off a little bit of a rubble. The car was kind of stuck, so water was still coming down. He gets out the car. He looks around. He says, Ty gets out. He says, everybody good? Ty, <laughs> we're like, yeah, we okay? He says, good. Quick. Get back in the car. Let's go. <laughs> That's Rick. That's Rick. <laughs> I'll get you another motherfucker.
The statue? Uh, that statue. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's not. Yeah, you can buy another one. Rich buy another. <laughs> Never said again, you is money. <laughs> so who, who is the funniest person you've ever met in person? Like off stage, off camera. Oh. The most talented is Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Oh. It's scary that God gave so much to him. It, it, He's just, it's like the Michael Jordan. If I play basketball, he's like the Michael Jordan. When they testify, you're like, ain't nothing you can do with him. He can do it all. It's, it's, and he did it all. If you look at his career from air part on it, just a motherfucking man. Oh, yeah. From, from stand up to movies to, movies, to, to trash. A little bit of music. I mean, everything. Music. But, but impressions. He but he, play, he plays all the instruments. He plays the piano. He plays the motherfucking mm. guitar. He plays all that. He ain't over there fronting. <laughs> <laughs> the motherfucker is a musician. All along, he can, imit uh, he can imitate anybody. He has a quick mind, and he also remembers every moment thing he's a he's a walking you just look at him and say well I'm glad I'm at least I'm funny <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm funny most you all, you everything ass you <laughs> everything <laughs> ass you everything ass you I mean he's the total I never met nobody like that before more talented than Jamie Foxx because Jamie's pretty talented yeah especially but... on the music side because yeah. he got Eddie on the music side, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but Eddie. And he has an Oscar. Yeah. He, he killed it in Ray. Yeah. I, 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 I mean. I give you all that. Still Eddie. Eddie. Yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, I love Fox, my man. I love him to death. Man, Eddie is. You just, when you see him, he, he busts out the, out the screen, everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. He always led the team. He always, you know what I mean? He just, and he does it with such ease. You want to say anything, there is nobody else could have did the nutter professor and played the whole family himself. Oh, yeah. And actually, just like that and just kill each one. Yeah. Oh. Coming to America. I Coming to I can't America. Can't wait to see part two. I mean, he's the man. Yeah. By far. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and I remember there was this old interview I saw, and this was sort of around the the Beverly Hills Cop era, mm. where he was like, you know, when you used to watch these these films with with black actors in it, it would always be like the all right, where we're, you know they'd have like the the white partner, like, okay, where are we going, you know, right. oh, what are we gonna do now? Okay, uh, you lead the way. Right. You never really saw these movies where, where a, a black lead was the one that was running the whole show right. until Beverly Hills Cop. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's, it's kind of subtle when you think right. about it. But yes, he came in as he's running it. Right. And it was a smash to the point where there was, what, three of those movies? Three of them. And, and he just kept on. Yes. He was... Just a natural talent. Just stand up from. Yeah, got on his, SNL just like that. On SNLs ain't been the same since he left. Yeah. Say what you want. Same on it. Did he hit Constitution Hall and did the stand up, solidify that. Then he made the jet right over the first 48 hours, his first one. Yeah. Nick Nolley killed it. Trading places. Trading place with Dan Alco. Talking about, uh, it's just. The totality of the work and yeah. just the quality that it can, and you can play it right now. Oh yeah, now I sat with a friend of mine recently, you know, uh, a black female who had never seen uh, Boomerang before. Right. And we watched it and she was just like, wow, that was like the greatest movie she had ever seen. And, and how they like, not only was it a great script and great acting, but like the whole presentation of an all black marketing company with right. black executives and you know what I mean it wasn't pandering it was like yo this is what right we, we're we're putting together this you know and how we're presenting it 
Yes. It was just, it was just dope. And they believe, and you believed it. It wasn't yeah. hood. It was actually competing against the number one marketing, whoever they may be. Yeah. That's why you see it. Yes. Yeah, no, it was dope, man. It yes. was, it was dope, man. Uh, man, listen, uh, earthquake. I appreciate you coming in. Always <laughs> a pleasure. My uh, you know, uh, it's a very sad time still that we're going through, but. You know, comedians like yourself, I think, are very important during times like this. Thank you. It's a pleasure, man. You my man, dog. Yes, sir. Anytime. I was pleasantly surprised when you called. Because you said, man, let's do it again. I'm like, hey, you hear people. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And you hear from artists. So, sure, we'll do it again. Yeah. It ain't never. But uh, yeah. I appreciate your work, man. You my man, dog. Thank it you, man. Good. Until next time.